Hello, experimenters. I'm Seth Noir. Man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting is a scene eight now. Oh, the voltage divider. Aha, let's see here. The voltage divider is probably one of the most common circuit elements you'll see in all of electronics. And it starts with some VN. Now, for us, it'll be an EMF, but it's denoted VN because a voltage divider could be just one piece of a larger circuit. In other words, the VN would be from another circuit element. But for us, it's the EMF, and then it goes through a series of two resistors, R1 and R2, and then our V out will be measuring across R2, all from grounded. All right, great. So now we could use some loop law action to find what we expect. Now, the Vn would just be the sum of the two voltage drops, V1 plus V2. Ohm's law would give us V1 is IR1, V2, IR2. Now, notice no subscripts on the I because we know that these are in series. The, the current will be the same. Factoring out that common I, get this, this expression for I, V in over the series sum of the resistors. All right, terrific. Terrific. So now, let's take a closer look at V out, which is the, the voltage across R2. Well, that's I, R2. And then we use substitution. Get with that I we just found in for this I here, and then give us our final expression for V out, R2 over the series sum of R1 plus R2 times V in. Okay, so suppose we weren't looking for V out. We were instead looking for some sort of mysterious resistance. In other words, then suppose we didn't know R2, and that would be R question mark. And we knew, suppose we knew R1, we knew the V in, and we knew the V out. So we could take this equation here, instead of V2 would be, v, instead of the R2s here would be R question marks, and then algebra to solve for the R question mark, the ratio of V out over V in minus V out times the R we know. All right, terrific. So that's the theory for part one. Let's look at the circuit of part one. Hmm. All right. So let's see here. Here, R1, R2. Let's use our good friend, the Agilent 34405A, to directly measure these resistances. Okay, so we know what to do. Switch to omega. Then we need to adjust the scale. Uh, okay, so I can do better than that now. Good, so we adjust it till we get the most number of significant data, and our resistance is in kilo ohms. Great, same thing for R2. All right, so let's see if we can adjust this to get any more significant data. We can, next one. Oh, really good, so one back. That's our resistance in kilo ohms. Terrific. Okay, so now, let's put this down for a little while. We'll come back to that in a second. Now let's introduce you to these two boxes. This is the oscilloscope. Uh, oh, lots of knobs, lots of buttons. So let's just focus on just what we need. Here in the upper left-hand corner is a knob for the intensity. So you can adjust that to where you're happy with it. Okay, moving over, this top knob here is for channel 1. And the top knob here would adjust its vertical orientation. And then this knob here, not the red one, don't touch any of the red ones, but this knob here would adjust how many volts each vertical box represents. Okay? And now the same thing would be for channel 2. Once again, the top knob would represent its horizontal orientation, and then this knob would represent how many volts per box. And very similarly with, the, with these knobs here, the horizontal, the time knobs, this top one would represent its horizontal position. And then this knob here would represent how many seconds, how much time each horizontal box represents. All right, and now, 
These knobs here, these button, these knobs, that's for the trigger. The trigger should already be set up for you. If you have a wave that appears to be running across a screen, that's probably a trigger problem. I still recommend you don't touch these knobs. Call over the TA to help you. All right, so now we have this box. Uh, the function generator, which is giving us a alternating current. So we want to sine wave out of this, so we have some options here. Make sure the sine wave is depressed. And we want 5,000 hertz. So we push the 1K, the 1K right here, make sure that's depressed. In this knob here, we turn it to 5. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. So that means it's 5 times 1K, 5K, 5,000 hertz. All right, and then now, so now I take the output and I'm going to put it directly into channel 1 to now set a voltage. Directly into channel 1. Red. Black. All right, so now I have to say, now what scale do I want? Well, I want 8 volts. There are eight boxes vertically. So, on the scale here, there are some numbers. And then here, right here, is where this box represents what number the vertical boxes represent. So here, one is in here, so that means each vertical box means one volt. So it's right here it would be two volts, here it would be 0.5 volts. I want one volt. Great, so the scale is all set. Now to set the amplitude, let's ground it first. The grounding is this switch here, I'm putting it in the middle, ground it, it's like a flat line. And then I'm gonna use the position knob to put it right on the center. Okay, then when I switch to either AC or DC, and then I adjust the amplitude on the function generator. It should grow just as much up as just as much down, so I could just get it the top piece touching the top, the bottom piece touching the bottom, and we have our 8 volts. Now, a little warning to you, when you go to DC, when you switch to DC, your flat-lined grounded center value might be not quite what you think because of this knob here, the DC offset. So you might need to adjust that so you get it growing at the top and the bottom at the same rate. Right, so let's take a, take a closer look here. Uh, this is 8 volts and we're calling that 8 volts. But in reality what's happening is this is alternating between positive 4 volts, negative 4 volts. Positive 4 volts, negative 4 volts. But we're calling this 8. We're, we're, we're considering this 8 volts.